Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today I want to talk about shooting boards, particularly what exactly do you do when they're no longer square? Is a shooting board still a shooting board if it doesn't shoot right? Let's dive in. First off, let's take a look at my shooting board. Now I made this one a long time ago and I'll try and leave a link to the video of this. Uh, it's in the description down below. Uh, but basically all it is is a fence at 90 degrees to an edge. You take the plane and you put it on its side and then you can put your board in here and the plane can then come through and clean up the grain until you get a nice square clean true edge running all the way across. Some shooting boards are really fangled and they'll have a groove or they'll even have something to hold onto the plane so it slides perfectly and smoothly. But a lot of them are really just a bench hook, even without this groove here, that allows the plane to slide beside. And as long as there is some small ledge for the lip of the plane to ride on, it won't keep eating into this. And having this fence on here will stop the wood from tearing out. So as the plane ejects out the other side, you won't get all of these pieces breaking off the back. Now, some people use shooting boards constantly. It is something that is a mainstay in their shop. And anytime they cut a board, they bring it over and they clean it up right to the line. And that works great. I don't do that as much. I like to do it freehand. I find that to be a little bit more fun. Uh, it's one less step and means I don't have to pull this out from underneath the bench. I do know of a couple people who actually have a shooting board built into their bench top. So they don't have to do anything. They just set the plane in it and then go to town. Uh, but personally, I think that's you know a little bit overboard. But again, that's one of the great things about our sport. There's a hundred different ways to do it. And you can find the way that works best for you. That then brings us to the topic for this here video. Now, a lot of shooting boards will actually have the fence that's adjustable. So you could actually move it to 45 degrees. Or if it gets knocked out of plane, you can move it back. I kind of like those. The problem is 99% of the time I need to shoot 90 degrees. And if I want to do 45, I grab a square, I set it on here, I put my board on there, and now I can plane at 45 degrees. So as long as I know this is perfectly true and perfectly 90 degrees, this is what I need it to be. The problem is wood moves. And after having this for a few years, this is no longer exactly 90 degrees. If I put my square in here, I'm off by a shaving or so, from one end to the other. So now when I play in boards, they're not perfectly square. There's a little bit of a gap on one side or the other. So we can put the plane in place and put a square up against it here. And we can see that there's a little bit of play here. I've got a little bit of a gap that I need to take off. So I need to take off more material up here and no material at all at this end. But how do we do that when we're right tight up in the corner? Because all shoulders have this edge here so that means you can't plane right tight under the corner. And that's where a shoulder plane comes in because a shoulder plane can come all the way to the outside. Now shoulder planes come in many different types. You can get them in block planes. You can get them in the more common shoulder plane type. You can even have a rabbit plane. As long as the iron comes flush up to the outside, then we'll be able to get down into that corner. So all I need to do is plane this down more at this edge than this edge until I get it square. So I could come in with this and clean it out. Or I could take the fence and depth stop off of my rabbit plane. Or, or for those of you who are in England, it's cheaper because it's a rebate plane. Or in this case, I'm actually just going to use a small shoulder plane. Now the problem with this is it's not going to come all the way up this edge. And that's really not that much of a problem. I'm just going to start taking off material here and I'll show you why in a moment. So I'm going to start right up here at the front edge. I'm going to take off a shaving. I'm going to back up. Take off another shaving from here out. And then we're going to back up a little bit farther. We can back up a little bit farther and take another shaving end to end. And we'll just keep backing up until we get a shaving from one end all the way to the other. Alternatively, if we had a big file, we could use that to come in here and cut this edge. And just get this clean edge right along there. This is thick enough that now we can bring this in and use all the way up to this little toe. So we can set this in here and do the same thing. Start here. And slowly work our way back, taking longer and longer shavings until we have a shaving going all the way along this. So now we've taken off several shavings and we've smoothed this down. We can put our plane back in here and we can check for square again. And right there, I've got to take off like one or two more shavings and we should be pretty good. So I'm going to do one shaving here, and back up a little bit farther, one shaving here. Test it again. And that's what I'm looking for. Absolutely perfectly square. 
So then after a few quick shavings, we can bring it back and test it out and see just how square our board is. And that is dead on perfect. That's what I like right there. So now I don't have to think about it. I can just bring the plane in here, square it up. And I know that when I take a shaving all the way across, it's going to be dead on square every time. A shooting board can be a fantastic tool in the shop, but it's something you kind of have to keep an eye on because it might go out of square every now and then if it gets bumped or if wood moves or if changes happen over time. Yeah, just keep an eye on it. Just like your squares, it should be checked regular to make sure that your square is still square. Otherwise, you're going to be trusting it to be square, and then it's not one of these days when it should be. Now, if you want to see the video on making this shooting board, this is an old, old video, um, but it's still out there. So the uh, quality has changed over the years, but I'll leave a link to this down below. I am thinking about making a new shooting board with a little bit more fun and finagle to it. And if you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe we will do a video about that here soon. So I hope you like this. If you did, let me know your comments and thoughts down below. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon, especially this last month. You have been absolutely amazing and an incredible encouragement to me and my wife. Uh, Cause my wife has been spending a lot of time at the hospital uh, with my mother-in-law and uh, just, <laughs> Thank you. I, I really can't say it enough. So if you see anyone over on this side who's scrolling, tell them thank you because they are the reason that Wood by Right is here. And without patrons and members here on YouTube, it would not happen. So thank you for that. I think that'll about do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. A shooting board. Down south, that's what they call a target.